What does the woolly mammoth, the Tasmanian tiger, and a Neanderthal all have in common? Well, they're all extinct, and they're all ancient creatures scientists are trying to bring back to life. The woolly mammoth, a massive shaggy-haired elephant relative, disappeared about 4,000 years ago. But scientists are working to bring it back. One biotech company called Colossal Biosciences is actually trying to do this, using gene editing technology to insert mammoth traits into the DNA of Asian elephants, the mammoth's closest living relatives. The goal is to create a hybrid that looks and behaves like a mammoth with thick fur, a layer of fat for insulation, and the ability to survive in freezing temperatures. But why put all this time and effort into something like this? I mean, sure, it would be cool to see a real life mammoth in person, but is there any other purpose behind research like this aside from the novelty? Well, in this case, yes. It's also an attempt to combat climate change. Back in the day, mammoths actually helped maintain Arctic permafrost by compacting the snow, which kept the ground cold. So scientists think reintroducing mammoth-like elephants to the Siberian tundra, for example, could help slow permafrost thawing. But it's one thing breeding a mammoth in a lab. Creating a healthy, self-sustaining population of mammoths is another challenge entirely, and even if the science works, there are ethical things to consider here. Should we be bringing back an animal that no longer has a natural place in the world? And what about the elephants being modified in the process? Can't be fun for them. Still though, Colossal Biosciences claims they're making steady progress, aiming to have the first mammoth calves born within the next few years. And if that happens, it could be the start of something groundbreaking. The dodo is one of the most famous extinct animals in history. This chubby, flightless, silly bird lived on the island of Mauritius until humans and the rats, dogs, and pigs they brought with them wiped them out by the late 1600s. The dodo is often used as a symbol of extinction, but scientists are hoping to change that by bringing it back to life. Once again, Colossal Biosciences, along with researchers from the University of California, Santa Cruz, has fully sequenced the dodo genome. Now they're working on editing the DNA of the Nicobar pigeon, the closest living relative to the dodo, to recreate a dodo-like bird. The goal here is to use the dodo as kind of a test case for de-extinction, studying how reintroducing a lost species will affect the natural ecosystems. That said, reintroducing the dodo wouldn't be easy. Mauritius has changed drastically since the dodo went extinct, and they're not sure whether a newly created dodo would have a place in today's environment, but no better way to find out than to try. Now we're getting into the really controversial territory. Unlike the woolly mammoth or dodo, Neanderthals weren't just animals, they were another species of human. They lived alongside our ancestors, interbred with them, and disappeared about 40,000 years ago. Some scientists think that if we really wanted to, we could bring them back, but should we? Harvard geneticist George Church has said that in theory, we could clone a Neanderthal by editing modern human DNA to match a Neanderthal's genetics. Of course, that would require a human surrogate mother to carry and give birth to a Neanderthal baby, and I think the list of women signing up for that would be slim. Pregnancy is a nightmare already, from what I've heard, but at least the light at the end of the tunnel is that you'll have this adorable little baby to love when it's all over, hopefully. A little Neanderthal creature, though, probably is not the gold at the end of the rainbow most parents are hoping for. And there's also the question of what kind of life a Neanderthal would have. Would they be treated as a person, a science experiment, a sideshow attraction? Even ignoring the ethical issues here, there are practical concerns. Neanderthals adapted to a more ice age environment, and their brains worked differently from ours. Could they even function? in today's world? Would they want to? While the idea of resurrecting a lost branch of humanity is definitely fascinating, it's also one of the most morally complicated things science could ever attempt. The Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine, was a strange marsupial predator native to Australia and Tasmania. It looked like a dog with stripes, had a pouch, kind of like a kangaroo, and it could open its jaws wider than any modern mammal. The last known thylacine died in captivity in 1936, but there are rumors there may still be a small group of them roaming around. Now scientists want to bring it back for real. Our friends over at Colossal Biosciences and the University of Melbourne are using CRISPR gene editing to modify the DNA of the numbat, which kind of looks like a squirrel-sized version of the Tasmanian tiger. The idea is to reintroduce thylacine traits into numbats, eventually creating an animal 
nearly identical to the extinct predator. If they succeed, they plan to release them into Tasmania to restore ecological balance. Since the thylacine was an apex predator, it being gone may have disrupted the natural order of things. But even if they managed to create a thylacine-like creature, would it actually behave like one? No one really knows. There's also the question of whether these animals could survive in modern Australia, where their old habitat has changed quite a bit. And again, it's an exciting idea, but a gamble, and one that may take decades to pull off. The Irish elk was one of the largest deer species ever, with males sporting antlers up to 12 feet across. Now, these weren't actually exclusive to Ireland. The Irish elk roamed across Europe and Asia before going extinct around 7,000 years ago. Scientists think there were a couple of factors here, climate change and human hunting, pretty typical stuff. But because the Irish elk is closely related to modern deer species like the fallow deer, scientists think they may be able to use selective breeding and genetic engineering to recreate it. Since deer still thrive in many parts of the world, reintroducing the Irish elk might not be as far-fetched as bringing back something like the dodo or the mammoth. But again, just because we could doesn't necessarily mean we should. A deer with 12-foot antlers sounds cool until you realize it may not even fit in modern forests or even be able to survive in today's climate. And let's be honest, if these things started wandering onto highways, that would be a disaster waiting to happen. Still, if scientists pull it off, seeing these ancient giants roam again would be pretty incredible. The cave lion was one of the largest big cats to ever exist, roaming across Europe and Siberia before going extinct about 10,000 years ago. Unlike modern lions, it was bigger, fluffier, probably better suited to cold climates. Scientists have been able to recover some pretty well-preserved cave lion cubs from Siberian permafrost, and now they're considering bringing them back because cave lions are closely related to modern lions. Researchers think cloning or selective breeding could eventually revive them. They want to reintroduce them to places like Siberia where they might help control herbivore populations. Some argue that since cave lions once roamed these areas, they could fit right back into the ecosystem. But obviously, introducing a prehistoric predator back into the environment isn't exactly risk-free. Even if they managed to bring back cave lions, where would they live exactly? In an age where regular lions are already struggling to survive, throwing an Ice Age cat into the mix seems kinda nuts to me. Plus, imagine the headlines. Genetically engineered super lion escapes, eats entire village. Maybe this would be interesting. The moa was a massive flightless bird from New Zealand, with some species standing up to 12 feet tall, which is horrifying. Unlike the dodo, which fell victim to European colonization, the moa was wiped out centuries earlier by the Maori who hunted it to extinction by around 1400. But you guessed it, some scientists want to bring it back. Using DNA recovered from moa fossils and preserved remains, some researchers think there's a possibility they can edit the genome of the moa's closest living relative, the South Island Takahi, to recreate a bird similar to the extinct one. Since New Zealand's ecosystem evolved without large land predators, the idea is that reintroducing the moa could help restore the natural balance, but there are a few problems. First, moa weren't just big, they were slow and defenseless, making them pretty easy targets for modern invasive species. Second, the forests and grasslands they used to roam have changed. We don't really know if a revived moa would have enough habitat left to survive. The quagga was a bizarre looking zebra that only had stripes on one half of its body. Almost looked like nature just ran out of ink and then we're just like, whatever, they're gonna go extinct anyway. Why try? It lived in South Africa, but was hunted to extinction by the late 1800s. Unlike some of the more ambitious de-extinction projects, scientists have already made progress on reviving the quagga without even using cloning. All they've done is selective breeding, finding zebras with kind of quagga-like traits and then breeding them together. And over time, they've created animals that do look very similar to the original quagga. And sure, they're not genetically identical to the old ones, but they're close enough that they could one day roam the plains of South Africa just like their ancestors. The big question is whether reviving the quagga actually serves any purpose beyond proving that it can be done. And in this case, yeah, I don't know, doesn't really seem like it. Still, of all the de-extinction efforts, this one seems the most practical and least likely to result in 
unexpected disaster, so there's that. The Great Awak was basically a northern hemisphere penguin. Couldn't fly, but it was an incredible swimmer, using its flipper-like wings to dive for fish. Unfortunately, they were easy pickings for humans who hunted them to extinction by the mid-1800s. Now scientists want to use gene editing to modify the DNA of its closest living relative, the Razorbill, to recreate them. If successful, these new ones could be released onto remote islands where their ancestors once lived, bringing back an important part of the North Atlantic ecosystem. But would the modern world even have room for the Great Awak? Climate change, pollution, overfishing, it's dramatically altered the oceans since this bird went extinct. Even if scientists manage to recreate it, there's no guarantee it could survive today. On the other hand, if successful, it could be a major step toward using de-extinction to repair damaged ecosystems. So imagine a manatee, but bigger, way bigger. The Stellar's sea cow was a massive marine mammal that could grow up to 30 feet long and weigh over 20,000 pounds. It used to live in the North Pacific, but was hunted to extinction by the late 1700s, less than 30 years after being discovered. Now, some scientists think they can bring them back. Unlike other extinct animals, the Stellar sea cow does have a very close modern relative, the dugong, meaning once again, there's a possibility they could modify dugong DNA to recreate something similar to the extinct sea cow. Since sea cows once played an important part in keeping kelp forests healthy, bringing them back could also help restore marine habitats, but the modern ocean isn't exactly a safe place for giant, slow-moving herbivores. Pollution and boat traffic make it unlikely that a revived stellar sea cow would have an easy time surviving. And considering that humans wiped them out already, who's to say it wouldn't just happen again? Still, if scientists succeed, we might one day see these massive creatures gliding through the ocean once again, as well as everything else on this list. What do you think of that? Let us know down in the comments. I've been your host, James, and I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.